Hello, brothers and sisters. It is a great day to study the Word of God, and I invite you all to join me in exploring through the Bible. Our last episode was on the revival during Jehoshaphat's reign, and chapter 17 of 2 Chronicles records the second great revival period. It was much greater than the revival during Asa, Jehoshaphat's father. Because the king honored God and walked in the ways of David, specifically the first ways, when David was young yet steadfastly dependent on God, God honored Jehoshaphat with riches and honor in abundance. This king not only took away the high places and the groves of pagan worship out of Judah, but sent out Levites throughout the land to teach the law of the Lord. He therefore built both people and castles, molding fear of God and uplifting wealth and security of the land. Yet, like many, Jehoshaphat too had a weak spot, an alliance with Ahab, king of Israel, the northern kingdom through marriage. A war at Ramoth Gilead out of this alliance nearly took his life. Today we shall see God's position on this alliance. May God bless our time together. Second Chronicles chapter 19 verses 1 and 2 When Jehoshaphat king of Judah returned safely to his palace in Jerusalem, Jehu the seer, the son of Hanani, went out to meet him and said to the king, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Because of this, the wrath of the Lord is upon you. As I mentioned earlier, God was not too happy for Jehoshaphat to associate himself with Ahab. And actually, Jehoshaphat got out of quite a difficult situation. People were after him because he was the only one dressed in royal robes. And the enemy thought that he was the king of Israel. And they started pursuing Jehoshaphat. But when he cried out to God, God rescued him. Whereas Ahab was the one who lost his life. Now, I'd like us to just think about this verse. Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Now, it's important for us to associate ourselves with sinners or those who are away from God as long as we are going to be an influence on them. But it's dangerous to couple ourselves together with the enemy and then try to be an influence on the others. Now that is what happened in Ahab and Jehoshaphat's life. Now Jehoshaphat associated himself with a wicked king, Ahab, and was trying to ward off the enemy. Now that is dangerous. We cannot couple ourselves with darkness or with something that is against God's word. If we want to be an influence, a good influence in this world, it's important for us to stay clear of anybody who claims to not love the Lord, who claims that he is happy where he is, it's important for us to disassociate ourselves from them. But if we are going to be an influence on them, yes, we should mix around with them, help them, talk with them. But in no way are we to partner with them in order to be an influence. I hope you got that clear. Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? We've got to be careful. Now at the same time, look at Jehu, the seer. Now remember, he is criticizing a king. But is he doing the right thing or the wrong thing? Now is he opening his mouth too much in blaming the king for something that he has done? Now we've got to be careful, especially when we're dealing with people over us. God doesn't expect us to be God's spiritual policemen. Now Jehu was instructed of God and it was then that he communicated this truth to Jehoshaphat. Some of us like to tell everybody how they should be separated, with whom they should associate and with whom they should not associate. Now God makes it very clear that we are not to judge others in questionable matters. Remember that people are not coming before us in a judgmental manner. Now in Romans chapter 14 verse 4 we read, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? 
to his own master he standeth or falleth yea he shall be holden up for god is able to make him stand now we fall into the error of criticizing others because they are not as separated as we think they should be you see god is able to make that individual stand now if he has a personal faith in christ god will hold him i would like to put it like this i must give an account some day for my life to the lord jesus christ he is my master you are not in the same way i am not your master the lord jesus christ is your master you will give your account to him the fact that i will some day give an account to the lord jesus christ keeps me plenty busy it's no point sitting in judgment on others it's really not our business it is his business god will rebuke me if i do wrong now from the example of jehoshaphat jehoshaphat got into this trouble but he was not forewarned he went into this and i think he learned the lesson the hard way god taught him through this experience and jehoshaphat knew how dangerous it was and when jehu questioned him or brought this to his notice jehoshaphat clearly understood what Je- jehu was talking about god is indeed gracious you know even if we do wrong he makes things straight if our heart is right with him listen to verse 3 there is however some good in you for you have rid the land of the ashra poles and have set your heart on seeking the lord all said and done jehoshaphat was a remarkable man though he got his son jehoshaphat's son into the family of ahab and that brought judgment god is gracious and allows jehoshaphat to live you know all of us fall short of god's standard even our righteous acts is as filthy as rags in god's sight but god looks upon us he remembers that we are but dust and what does he do he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies now when god is doing that shouldn't we just be thankful and grateful for every breath that we breathe and when we have enjoyed his grace and his mercy upon our life how much more careful we should be when we are trying to point the flaws of another individual yes god calls us at times to correct other people but even when we are correcting them it's so important for us to correct them or to straighten their path realizing that we can be doing the same thing in a short matter of time we can fall into the same sin that we are trying to correct we've got to be so careful let's remember that god is gracious god is merciful and all that we need to do is thank him for the life that he has given us and in spite of our faults he always gives us strength and he has a record of all the right things that we do even a cup of cold water given in jesus name that is recorded isn't that wonderful you know when we approach god and confess our sins he forgives forgets all our sins but then think of this He knows everything that we do for his glory. Isn't that wonderful? When we meet our savior, he is going to look at us just as if we have never sinned. And not only that, he is going to be able to praise us and he will praise us for the things that we have done right. I hope that each one of us will spur ourselves in order to do right, to rid the land or rid our home, to rid our lives. from any sin any hindrances that would draw us away from god let us do our best so that we can praise and worship and adore our great king now let's read verse 4 jehoshaphat lived in jerusalem and he went out again among the people from beersheba to the hill country of ephraim and turned them back to the lord the god of their fathers Now we will see some of the reforms that Jehoshaphat engaged himself. He indeed was a wonderful man. Verses 5 to 7. He
he appointed judges in the land in each of the fortified cities of Judah. He told them, Consider carefully what you do, because you are not judging for man but for the Lord, who is with you whenever you give a verdict. Now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Judge carefully, for with the Lord our God there is no injustice or partiality or bribery. Isn't it wonderful the way Jehoshaphat is instructing his people, the judges that he has appointed, to make sure that people are given proper judgments over various issues. And he makes sure that he tells them, you need to fear the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know, without wisdom and discernment, who can judge? I think it's so important for us. You know, when we are put in positions where we've got to have discernment, it's important for us to fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now let's read verses 8 and 9. In Jerusalem also Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites, priests, and heads of Israelite families to administer the law of the Lord and to settle disputes. And they lived in Jerusalem. He gave them these orders, You must serve faithfully and wholeheartedly in the fear of the Lord. Listen again, to serve in the fear of the Lord. Many of us forget you know, the responsibilities that God has placed us in, we tend to think that we are chosen because of our own strengths, our own abilities. But it's so important for us to recognize that we are there because of God's grace and we are to serve, serve God in the fear of God. Without that, each one of us can, you know, get prone to do anything that we want and we can misjudge and we can hinder the work of God. These judges were appointed not to get all disputes under the rug as it were, or to settle it many years later, but they were there in order to make sure that they have proper judgments. And not only that, they were appointed to instruct. You know, without instructions, we cannot get proper life. We cannot get a proper life or people won't live right simply because they're not instructed. And it's wonderful that before judging, instruction is given. I think that's so important. So often we get into a lot of hardship because we don't pay heed to the instructions that are there. Now let's see what Jehoshaphat does in chapter 20. Chapter 20 verses 1 to 3. After this, that is, after the land was organized with proper judges and proper instructions that were to be given by these judges, we find in verse 1 of chapter 20, after this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Maonites came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazazon Tamar, that is En Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. You see, now this man has a normal reaction. He is afraid. He goes to God in prayer and sends word out to his people to join him in fasting and prayer. Now verses 4 and 5. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said in verses 6 to 7, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations, power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. O our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham your servant? Jehoshaphat is doing something that his father Asa did not do. Asa did not rest upon the experiences of the past. 
which would have given him faith. Jehoshaphat, knowing what God has promised in the past and what God has done in the past, now rests upon the promises of God and is propelling himself forward. He goes over this entire situation in his prayer to God and he concludes his prayer, verses 12 to 13. O our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood before the Lord. They did not know what to do, but they did know something which was the first thing and the best thing they ought to have done. They say that our eyes are upon you. I don't know what kind of a situation you may be going through. You may not know what to do. Everything is probably shaky, scary, and you really don't know what to do. But my friend, turn your eyes upon Jesus. The things of this world will grow strangely dim when you face the Lord. Those who look to the Lord, their faces are never covered with shame because God is victorious, God is almighty, and he can give you victory. Listen to what God has to say now. These are the words of Jehaziel, God's spokesman now. Verse 15, he said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Oh, how wonderful God is. He says, don't be afraid, Jehoshaphat. The battle is not yours. You cannot fight it. It's mine. I find myself, and I'm sure you do also, in situations from which we cannot get ourselves out. But God says, turn it over to me. The battle belongs to me. Keep your eyes focused on me. Stand and see what I can do. Verse 20. Early in the morning they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. Now listen to what he instructs them to do. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Notice what are the different things that the people do. First, they see the Lord, then they stand before the Lord, and now what are they doing? They're going ahead, singing to the Lord. See, stand, sing. I hope you remember this when you actually face some problem. See the Lord, stand and see what God can do. And when God speaks, move ahead with a song in your heart and you will see amazing things. Quite an unusual way to organize an army. He didn't get out his atom bomb or nuclear weapons. He just organized a choir to go ahead and praise the Lord. Sing, for his mercy endures forever. This whole chapter is thrilling to read. I hope you will just go after, the, you know, we finish the study and read this whole passage. It's exciting. Verse 22. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Verse 24, when the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder. And they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value. Now this is great victory. Then led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem Return joyfully, praising God for what he has done. It is God who gives rest and peace. 
You know, we think when we face problems or when there is enemy, we try to use the best influence that we probably know. We try to reach higher ups. We think if we make some kind of alignment, some kind of treaty, even if it means somebody who doesn't know the Lord, we will have victory. It's quite contrasting from the previous chapter. Jehoshaphat had aligned himself with Ahab and he got into trouble. Now what does he do? He aligns himself with God and amazing victory. He doesn't even have to fight the battle because the battle was the Lord's. All that he had to do was simply collect the plunder. Dear friend, whatever you are going through, whatever situation or challenge that is ahead of you, don't align yourself to people and be very careful of aligning yourself with those who claim to follow darkness. Focus on the Lord. Stand in the presence of the Lord. Pray to Him. You know, it's wonderful how children even stood in the presence of the Lord and prayed to God. And then just get out all those instruments, lift your voices and praise the Lord. Sing joyfully and God will grant you victory. It's God's battle. You've just got to tell Him that there is a battle and He will fight for you. Jehoshaphat was indeed a great king and he got his whole nation, the nation of Judah, to experience great victory. But although he was a great king, a good king, he was not perfect, as we see in verses 32 and 33. He walked in the ways of his father Asa and did not stray from them. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. The high places, however, were not removed. And the people still had not set their hearts on the God of their fathers. Ultimately, false worship led to the downfall of this nation. It's so important for us to sustain the path that we have begun. Now, if we are focusing on God, and when we are standing in His presence and worshipping Him and singing His praises, it's not a one-time event, friend. We've got to continue to do this day after day after day. It says they did not set their hearts on the Lord and that led to the downfall. I hope that each one of us will set our hearts. It's not just about focusing our eyes on Christ. It's not just about standing in His presence and singing His praises. It's also setting our hearts aligned to His will and then we will see God's victory at all times. I am personally thrilled and deeply encouraged by the lesson set out for us today. Jehoshaphat's love of God and His Word paid off more than we can imagine. Because he knew the law, he knew something more than his father and acted on it, that is, to turn to God's promises through prayer. As God's children, we need to print these words in our hearts and appropriate them continually in our lives. The battle is the Lord, not yours. Dear friends, how long should fear and panic drive us? How long should we foolishly keep fighting and losing battles? Which voices and alliances are drumming up war against you and threatening annihilation? While numbers sophistications or complexities, alliances or influence, and many other things matters to us. They mean nothing to God. He will come to save if we only trust and cry to Him for help. Take courage and stay strong. Mm -hmm.